Did you know that it's estimated that over half of the working software engineers don't have a computer science degree? In fact, I had the assumption that you need a computer science degree so thoroughly ingrained within my mind that for some time, even though I wanted to learn how to code, I just didn't even try because I thought it was impossible. But luckily, I did try and I did struggle and I did continue to question whether or not I was smart enough. I questioned my capacity to learn. I mean, I even dealt with my own mind just telling me that I'm not good enough. But through all of that, I did one simple thing. I just kept going. Step one, start with Python. And I'm not saying start with Python because it's the best language to start with when first learning. Arguably, there are better languages to start with, but in the end, in my opinion, which language you start with really doesn't matter. I'm saying to start with Python because there's a really good introduction to computer science and programming using Python course offered for free by MIT. This course started on June 2nd, but I'm pretty sure you can enroll and catch up. Starting with this course will do two things. It'll hold you accountable and it will force you to regularly write code without needing to think about starter projects or anything like that. If you happen to be watching this at a time where it's not currently possible to enroll in the course, you can actually go through the archived version of the course. But in that case, you'll have to be more disciplined because with the archived version of the course, there's no active forum and there's no staff active on the forums and there's no graded assignments. But still, if this is your only option, just do it. You'll thank me later. At some point in this course, you're going to encounter big O notation. Now, when I was doing this course, there weren't any intuitive resources available to learn Big O. So I took it upon myself to make my own resources to learn Big O. And I'm pretty sure that my series on Big O will be helpful to you as well. So make use of it or don't, but either way you have to learn it. Which brings me to step two, learn Big O notation. Now, some people will tell you that it's not necessary to work as a developer and that everyday tasks as a developer don't involve algorithms or data structures or big O and blah, 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 blah. But the bottom line is they're full of crap. If you want to be a good software engineer, you need to know the fundamentals. There's plenty of crappy code out there. Don't be a contributing factor to that. You don't need to go crazy with algorithms and data structures, but there are some fundamentals that you do need to learn. Step three, make a to-do list app. Now I'm telling you to make a to-do list app specifically because it eliminates the need for you to waste time searching on the internet for first time projects or anything like that. There are plenty of good YouTubers online that have made good guides on how to create a to-do list app. Just make sure your app has a front end, a back end, and some sort of database implementation. And don't be afraid to work with two different languages. You might run into a situation where you need to use some JavaScript and CSS and HTML on the front end and maybe like Python on the back end. Don't be discouraged by that. Just, just try to use both of the different languages. Remember, you're not necessarily supposed to know anything at this point. This is where you're actually going to be learning a lot of this stuff. And if it's really difficult for you to work with two different languages, try to find some type of tutorial that uses like an MVC or something like Django. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Google is your friend. Which brings me to step four, learn how to Google. Now you probably think, oh yeah, I have experience with Googling in my everyday life. Well, in this field, Googling will become your life. And that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Step five. Do all 75 of the blind 75 leak code questions. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. In the beginning, this is going to be difficult, but that's true for almost everybody. So don't get discouraged and don't assume that you're the only one that's not smart enough to easily comprehend these problems in the beginning. There are probably only a select few that don't struggle with these problems in the beginning. And most likely, if you've gotten to this point, you're smart enough to be able to learn the patterns and comprehend these problems. But it's very important that you don't try to memorize solutions to problems. You need to try to learn the patterns. 
There are probably around 3,000 of these problems at this point, but there are only 13 or so patterns, and all 3,000 or so of these problems use these same patterns. They might combine and mix and match these patterns, but they're still using the same 13 or so patterns. And I actually have an algorithmic pattern series that goes over some of the most common patterns that you'll see. And yeah, there it is, five actionable steps. And if you've completed all these, you should be ready to start preparing for interviews at this point. So yeah, good luck with your first job.